Welcome back to another episode of Gardening with Ryan. That's a loud plane. Can we see it? Hang on. I can't tell. Oh, yep, there it is. <laughs> anyway. This is take two because I was uh, unable to find a plant I wanted to show you, but first I'd like to show you what we've seen in previous episodes. Probably my favorite plant that I'm growing out here. This is a crucifix orchid. I'll show you why. If I pull one of these flowers off... See that? Yep. Even more interesting. Well, not more interesting because the cross of Christ, but... Another interesting thing is how they propagate. Take a look at that. New plants grow off of the branches in order to uh, weigh down the branch and be planted. You can take a look at this one that I got from another part of the yard. And you can see these new ones coming off of here, attempting to take root. And the reason this is take number two is because I was looking for this one to show you and I couldn't find it because I thought I planted it over here. But I saw this thing hanging off of one of them. And... That's an impressive plant for something that has not taken root yet. So, you can see that things are getting a lot more green. And, we've got a couple other surprises too. So this started growing. It, it, it looks like, we all know what it looks like, but if anyone here knows what it, is please leave a comment a a am i growing marijuana <laughs> unintentionally does that even happen but i can't seem to find any other leaves that look quite like it in the area so the closest i've found were these Oh, check out that bird. Two birds. Ah, I think they're building a nest up there. Wow. Crow's nest. Anyway. We also planted this pot. There's an invasive mosquito species to San Diego, and they're extremely aggressive, prefer human blood, and get... The name of them is the Yellow Fever Mosquito. Isn't that just lovely? <laughs> the Yellow Fever Mosquito. And they have a unique stripe to them, and even though it's the end of November, they're still here, because apparently they can tolerate the cold. And this pot did not drain very well, so just before shooting this episode, punched a few holes in it. Now. This is in no way an affiliate link or or anything of the sort, but if you want a knife that will like never lose its edge, the zero tolerance Sinkovich. I've had this thing since I was like 16. This thing is like eight or nine years old and it keeps a perfect edge. I haven't had to sharpen it once. Uh, I remember in the box it said you can send it back to the factory whenever you want if you don't like how it is or if you just need it sharpened. But I'll let you guys take a look at all the different things that I've planted in here. Uh, various. See, it's a pretty big backyard, but this is my garden in particular. I. 
renter room here and graciously was given this area as my personal garden and I'm allowed to take cuttings from other parts. You can also see that I planted a crucifix orchid over there. But that's a beautiful plant, those two. And I love these. So we've got those going. And check out that one. Isn't that neat? What was previously growing in this one were uh, these. Whatever these are. And whatever that is growing right in there. Because that was an unintentional mosquito habitat. But along with that grew... Well, I used a shovel to dig it out, but you can see that it was like this. And it looks like they're still alive. Like, let's see. And... This is what was growing in there. But it looks to be flowering even after I dug it out. Impressive. You know what they say. Life finds a way. But... You'll notice how it spreads almost like grass. I mean... That's pretty cool. The ice plant, still doing well. In case any of you are new to this series, I have no idea what I'm doing with gardening. And I started this, and we're keeping it going. And some of you old viewers might remember, these two pots were dead, and these plants, that kind, I heard from my dad, who used to work in a uh, gardening department, that if you water them enough, you can bring them back to life. Oh, question for all of you uh, plant nerds out there. The um, marijuana-looking plant that we have here. The closest thing I can find to it... This is take two. I think I already mentioned that, so if I repeat myself, uh, do have mercy on me. But, uh, the closest we can find to it is these, but it does not look quite the same to me as that one. But, um, let's see, do we have anything else new in this garden? Yes, we have a couple of other things. Uh, this one? I'm gonna tell you guys a story. See, I was picking this one up and moving it around, and I pulled most of these out to trim them because, kind of like this one is right now, yeah, it's kind of sticking out rather than coming straight up. And I got a spider bite while I was doing that. No big deal, right? So came to water it about a week later. It was a particularly painful spider bite. Not that I mind, but I was like, hmm, that spider must have been pissed. I watered it out like that. And out come probably like 50 black widows. We have mostly brown widows around here, not even black widows, so... <laughs> I was like, oh, that's just wonderful. But because that whole pot looks great, except for this one sticking out, we're gonna just see. I could just pull that out and we're just gonna break and place. 
Doesn't that look so much better now? Wonder if this will take root. And we've got one last surprise before we get into the topic of the day. Have you ever seen a dandelion that tall? This is my everything pot that I just throw stuff into. And look at that thing. Wow, I I almost, I gotta zoom out to fit it all on the camera. I don't even think the camera scale does it justice here. Hang on, let me flip it myself. I mean, isn't that, isn't that something? And hopes of growing more like this. Let me see if I can get this on a decent camera angle. Oh, it's easier to shake it. And you can see them flying around. I've seen these a lot lately. It's interesting, just paying attention to the air. Um, you see on my finger, these, uh, these aer aerodynamic seeds, they, um, they're essentially little umbrellas with the seat on the bottom. Like if I drop them, you might be able to capture. Now nah, a little bit too small. But um, the garden's a whole lot greener. We've got a lot of grass growing in here, kind of like I wanted. We've got, um, this area really filling in. We've got, it looks like this, uh, this sort of grass, whatever it is, and more traditional grass, like right here, and, uh, we've got all that. You're alive. Lots of good stuff. Anyway, on to today's topic. Your life is really in God's hands. Now, I know, uh, hang on. I know your brain just went. Yeah, I know. Uh, everyone knows that. Uh, if you're a Christian listening, you might just see it as one of those things that has been repeated thousands and thousands and thousands of times to the point where it's not even a meaningful phrase anymore, but just an incantation that you say as part of your group. Now, I, I think tragically, this is the case with a lot of things. Quick interruption to look at those plants. If any of you people are like total gardening nerds and can tell me everything I'm growing. Oh, flowers. That would be fantastic. But. Well, here's more of the leaves that look like the, uh. 
No, that's that's different enough, man. <laughs> I, uh, but it stayed the same size for a couple weeks. And we've got these, uh... I call them the three-leaf clover plants, but I don't know what they actually are. Uh, a viewer, and we've got quite a few of them growing in here. I don't know what they actually are, to be honest, but I had a viewer tell me that they're edible. And when I was pulling some up, they were like, No, don't do that! Actually, it was my ex-girlfriend. So, we're going to clean this pot up a little bit, because this looks a little bit sloppy. And finally get into the topic for today. Your life is in God's hands. And rather than giving a, a lecture, I'm just going to give you a story and some reflections. In a recent unfortunate turn of events due to my own poor planning I ran out of one of my medications and was making things like emergency calls to the doctor hey I, I know it's a little late but like help and Oh, look, that's such a tiny spider. Let me see if I can get it to move a little bit. And it looks like there's one in here, too. Anyway. At the beginning, I had what I would call the right attitude. And look at that. Look at that little succulent growing out of this. That's, that's, that's fantastic. The right attitude. And I said, you know what? I'm going to offer this suffering up to God. And I don't... And I said... Cannot God make clonopin rain from the sky, should that be the necessity? Uh, clonopin was the particular medication I was out of, and if you're asking, if you're wondering why I take clonopin, it's due to um, mental health issues rather than epilepsy, but... Um, for those of you that know about the pharmacology of clonopin, which is a fancy word for how it works and how it acts in your body, it's very unpleasant to run out. In fact, it can be life-threatening. And at the beginning, before the suffering really kicked in, I was pretty... I felt... Like I had it under control. In the sense of... Oh, God can make it rain, Klonopin, you know? But... Well, we've been way too zoomed in for a while now. And once the suffering started kicking in and the withdrawal symptoms began to get worse, I was a little bit like, okay, uh, uh, God, I, wh wh where's the uh, clonopin rain? And, uh, oh, that's a black widow web. wonder if we can get him to come out. Maybe it was like wreck his home, but... Or 
her helm most likely, but that's okay. They build webs again fast. I just don't want to get bit by one of those again. Because that sucked. I started to say, alright. This sucks, but God, I, I, I offer this to you, and you know, there's the whole not a hair can fall from my head without your will thing. But I, I, I'm not seeing it here, and this is pretty bad. And I'm ashamed to say that a few hours later, I was in a state of despair, saying things like, I, I had a couple people trying to help me make these phone calls because well it's pretty hard to talk on the phone when you're in these withdrawals and I hit the point of I don't even care anymore I give up whatever man I don't care if it gets refilled I don't care if it doesn't so classic despair and Almost like clockwork, right after openly and verbally <laughs> expressing that I no longer trusted God to take care of me, a shame to admit, I got a text on my phone that... Earlier than even it should have been, it was filled and ready for me at the pharmacy. And try to place yourself in my shoes for a moment. You conclude, okay, this situation feels hopeless. I I give up. It's This is not going to just, quote, work out. Then it did. And... Needless to say... It's a bit humiliating. And humbling. And I think a really good lesson. Because... I was right that God indeed can make whatever I need rain from the sky. Or he can choose not to do that. Or like Jesus says, don't take thought of what shall we wear or eat and drink and all that stuff. I, I, I'm not a professional theologian, so don't come at me if this is technically incorrect, but I feel like what he's getting at is it's not like you can control these things anyway, so why are you thinking about it? <laughs> and I want everyone here to think for a minute about your current state of life. Where you live, what your job is. Oh, three o'clock. You know what that means. Let us pray. Oremus. Eternal Father, I offer you body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. In this, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, bring us to glory by your passion and cross. Glory be to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Also, if you don't wear a miraculous medal, you should. If you don't have one and want one, just... Leave me a comment, I'll send you one. Same goes for the brown scapular. You, you can see the acne on my face right there. Woke up with that today. Uh, 
Another pro tip. Wash your face after you eat really greasy food before you go to bed. But, back to what I was saying. Take inventory, briefly, if you will, of your current state of life. Okay. Done. Now I want you to think about things that have gone horribly wrong. Uh, is, uh, bear with me, I'm not trying to be depressing, but when things, when something really bad has happened, and I'm not trying to depress anybody, but uh, surely it comes to your mind sometimes if it's really bad, so that thing. Did you expect it? Did you have time to, you know, prepare for it and worry about it and think about how you're going to deal with it beforehand? Or did it land on you with as much surprise as a piano falling from the sky? I'm gonna probably... Oh, yeah, there's like baby black widows crawling on there. I'm gonna try to be careful and not get bit by mama. But I'm gonna take a what I think is a pretty safe guess and assume that you got totally blindsided by whatever it is you're thinking about right now. Like, wham. Because, here's the thing. When you're in a, in a war, does the enemy warn the other faction? I'm coming, and this is how I'm coming. No, they just show up for an invasion. Similarly, when things go wrong, you don't get time to prepare. If you had time to prepare, it probably wouldn't go wrong. So if you're worrying about it, I, I, I hate to say it, but sorry, you don't have the luxury of worrying about bad things before they land on you. Now, I find this to be a con after thinking about it. And it shows the actual uselessness of worrying. The definitional uselessness, I should say. Ooh, I almost just depotted that whole plant. Like I said, not a professional gardener. Just having fun out here. But when things go bad, you don't got time to prepare for that. And now I want you to think about things that have gone really well. Just some of the most amazing moments of your life. Things that define who you are as a person. Moments that you'll remember on your deathbed with the utmost happiness. Did you intricately plan all of the circumstances that led up to getting... Oh, that was... That scared me a bit. Look at that. Uh, I think that's just a brown widow. Because... And they aren't nearly... As aggressive. Or as venomous. <laughs> as Black Widows, but it made me jump a little bit, which is weird, but I love spiders. Let me see if I can get a good shot of it. Look at, look at them go. If we can catch a shot of the hourglass, I'll be able to tell you which one it is, but... All right, what I was saying is, I'm also willing to bet that the things you're thinking about right now that went extraordinarily well kind of just happened. This isn't to say, oh, just be absolutely 
foolish with everything and don't make wise decisions. That's not at all what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that God is the one who gives the results. And I'm reminded of Jesus rebuking the disciples during the storm. Lord, we perish. And he rebukes them. He, he's, he asks them, do you not have any faith? How is your faith so small? And the, uh, the Lord who made all of this and this and the sun over there and these trees and designed them intricately. It, it really is incredibly prideful to think that we can get in his way, so to speak. No, I'm not teaching irresistible grace here. I'm not, I'm not teaching Calvinism. Sorry, Calvinist friends, not a Calvinist anymore. I'm a Catholic. In case you couldn't tell by the sacramentals. But... Uh, my point is... God's creation and power and might. And God's constant watching over you. And his love for you. Which looks like Jesus... Which looks like this. Dying on a cross... I know this is going to sound really cliche and like I'm making some really generic inspirational video, but that's really not at all my intention here. But God is bigger than your issues. In that we are to pray for relief, but... After you've done all you can do, reasonably, even if not that, you're not going to get that thing you want or that relief that you think will make you feel better <laughs> to whatever situation you're in. And for analogy here, it was, hey. If I don't get these pills from the pharmacy, I have to go for an expensive emergency room visit. Whatever your circum, right? As just as much as you can't get a single good thing unless God decides to give it from you. I plan on having a drink of water after this episode, for example. Unless God has already decided, yeah, I'm gonna give him that water. It's just not going to happen. Similarly, anything that you're worried about happening, or that has currently befallen you. Now, th th this will offend you. It offends all of us, I think, to some degree. It's because God said, yeah, go ahead. Do it, like mess him up. Like Job style. For your good. Or maybe for the good of another. Very likely for the good of another rather than your own good, actually. But. All things work together for good for those who uh, love God. So I'm not downplaying that God is using it for your good as well. But. I know for a fact, I know for a fact that whoever you are watching this right now, you're worrying about something. Something coming up, some circumstance, I, I don't know what it is. So I don't like the way this is planted, how it's like dead up until here. So we're just gonna depot this and we're gonna...
when you clone, you're supposed to cut at a 45 degree angle, so I'm going to try my best to do that. But... There we go. I know you're about something. You can't fool me. As long as you are still mortal and looking at that really cool colored leaf. Those really cool leaves. And watching this video. <laughs> You're worrying about something probably. Something's on your mind that you don't like. Now, I'm here to be the, be the bringer of good or bad news depending on well, how much faith you have. And, unfortunately, I often find myself not having very much. Especially in this regard. But, that solution that you so desperately want, that you think you need to this problem, pray for it. And if you don't get it, God has no intention of giving it to you right now. Let us recall that we're on his creation. We're breathing his air. This is, we're made out of his dirt, right? So, whatever it might be, I don't know your situation. I don't know your life. I don't know your mind. I don't know your heart. But, whatever you want, in regard to anything, can only come from God. Similarly, that thing you're worried about happening, that thing that you are probably constantly terrified about, well, I wouldn't say constantly terrified about, that's a bit extreme. I mean, it sounds like me, but I don't think people are as extreme as me most of the time in this regard, thankfully. I hope you aren't, at least. But I'm going to turn this hose on for a second just to relieve some water pressure from it. With a hose like the cap on it, um, can you just leave it on and let the water pressure build up or will it eventually explode? If anyone knows the answer to that, please let me know. But, anyway, back to what I was saying. This is going in the uh, mystery pot of everything. The thing you're worried about happening to you? You know, it, it might. It might. But, I want you to take a minute. Stop right now. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'll join you. We're going to pray together. Silently. That the bad thing you're worried about doesn't happen. And the thing you want to happen. That you're thinking about right now happens. Now close your eyes. And ask God. And even if you won't. I'll do it for you. Lord. You know the thing. That I'm here to ask for. I ask for this, and I ask for the things that all of the people watching this want and don't want to befall them. For the sake of the passion of Christ, hear and answer these prayers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I've got news for you. <laughs> Now that we prayed for it, if that thing you really don't want to happen lands on you, it's because God sent it right to you. Like, uh, a punishment for sin, maybe, I don't know, something to sanctify you both. I don't know, I'm not here to be the theologian about this. But, it doesn't take a professional to 
see this theme throughout Scripture. I mean, what did the Israelites live off of? Manna from the sky. Same earth. Oh, but that was that was before, you know. Uh, God did things back when the canon was open, but ever since the closing of the canon, God stopped doing things. Okay, calm down, John MacArthur. Calm down. This is a Catholic YouTube channel. <laughs> no, I'm kind of kidding, <laughs> but. I should get a haircut. It's really only this long because I've had no need to cut it. Now we're going to get to the watering segment of the episode. This is a longer episode because I had a longer rant to go on. And I wanted to show you guys the garden. But now that we prayed for it, Jesus is definitionally commanding you to stop thinking about that thing and seek the kingdom of God. And I think the way that he words it might be lost on a lot of people today, especially in our contemporary culture. Of hopelessness, I should say. And usually it's the opposite. Usually it's, oh, we have a culture of entitlement and this and that. But I think in this regard, we really sell God short. And we always put some kind of disclaimer on the words of Jesus when he says, if there's anything you ask in my name, you'll get it. And then we put a giant asterisk there. Like, whoa, that is way too radical. Hang on. The whole receive anything you ask in my name, that means that um, if you ask for forgiveness of your sins in my name, you'll get that. And of course, that, that, that that's, that's the main thing here. But I forget what chapter and verse it is, but it's, if anyone is sick, let him call to the elders. They will anoint him with oil, and he shall be healed, or whatever it says. Ooh! <laughs> Careful in your gardens if you have black widows, guys. They're a little bit meaner than most spiders. Don't be scared of them or anything. I mean, they, they're, they're just bugs, but... Similarly, if you got a fear of spider being bit by spiders, it's not going to get to you unless God lets it. I, I, I think you're starting to see the theme here. Everyone's worried about tomorrow. Everyone thinks to some degree, oh, my situation right now kind of sucks, and if I just have this thing resolved, I'll feel fine. No, that's not how it works. And what we get exhorted to by St. Paul in the scriptures, especially, who fleshes this out, and our Lord himself, is the ability to be content in every circumstance. Now, I think this is also a phrase that falls usually on deaf ears. Okay, let me back up a little bit. We, we prayed about that thing, and now you're either going to get it or you're not, and it's actually completely out of your control now. Yeah, even if it's a life or death matter. Yeah, you know what? If that's way too radical for you, I didn't say it. <laughs> I mean, I did, but I didn't make it up. <laughs> Blame, like, Paul or something, not me. He's the one who executed it this way. Well, it's not like Paul had access to the Gospels, but I'm sure he heard of the words of the Lord, but I don't know that I'd exit Jesus is the proper term, but regardless...
wind god wants to kill me? <laughs> you gonna get it done. When it's my appointed time to go, I there is no fortress that I could possibly build. No tower or army mighty enough to protect me from any form of divine chastisement. If God has the mind of I'ma mess him up to teach him a lesson with this thing, you're not getting out of it. And at the same time, even the thing that you think that you have and have a very tight hold on, like, okay, this hoe example, that I think, you know what? I can control this. Every time I squeeze, water goes. Do you not know that every single time I'm squeezing and water goes, God is going, okay, okay, yes, allowed, 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 permitted, permitted, permitted every breath you take you you think oh i have my lungs i can get this next breath no you need more than that you need god to say i'm gonna give that guy another breath and the thing is that you might worry about going without i think this worry largely stems from failing to recognize them as blessings or gifts. Now, are you entitled to gifts? Now, I know we live in a culture where there's like times of year where you're basically expected to get gifts for people, and if you don't, you're, it's almost an insult. But if we're going by strict definition here, a gift is something beyond obligation. It's a gift. It's I don't have to explain what a gift is to you. The air you breathe, the shelter you have, the people you have in your life, the relief you had from that headache last night, the whatever. It's a gift. Your life is a gift. God is not obligated to give you gifts. And... you really don't actually have that much control over if you're going to take that next breath. I really, honestly, it would appear this way to my fallen mind, but I have so little control over if I make it back into the house after this episode to even do something as simple as take a drink of water. Okay? Okay. And this is running pretty long, so we're just going to do a little bit more watering and cut it off. But as much control as I've over, I want this to shoot water right now. Boom. Is just as much control as you have over that thing you're worrying about. Let's say you have some like medical operation coming up or something serious, and I would love to pray for you in that. Please actually post a prayer request if that's the case, and I'll do a whole rosary video praying for that. But with every gift being from God, you know, the passages about every good thing coming from above, those are true. And you might feel like you're in an especially awful situation right now. And you know what? You might be. But seek first the kingdom of God and these things shall be added to you. And I'm not saying, okay, health and wealth gospel here. If you... If you love God, you're going to get everything you want how you want it. And that means that God's going to add them to you how he wants to. And once you realize, and I'm mainly talking to myself here, but if other people can benefit from this, that's awesome. Once you realize that 
any avoidance of any perceived bad situation or any victory or anything must be granted by God and that as his children nothing can befall us without his explicit permission it makes worrying definitionally useless recall how Jesus says has anyone added a day to their life by worrying? I think people may have with prayer. I don't think he would put that same rebuke on, has anyone ever accomplished anything with prayer? Of course he wouldn't say that. Oh, there's your spider friend again. But, let's say, Let's use an analogy. Let's say you ask, let's say you're a kid and you really want a certain toy, and you ask your parents for it, and then you're in your room, just agonizing about if you're gonna get it or not. Is that going to change the outcome in any way, shape, or form? Asking them might, sure, but. I, I, I hope you trust your parents enough that you don't have to despair that they're going to take care of you. And all of this to say, and I hope you find this as a comfort, you might be worried because you feel like you can't handle a situation or something, or you don't know what to do, or this might happen or that might happen or you want this person to do that or you want this to happen you really don't have much control over it at all you're a creature you're a creature serve God love him and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man and I'm sure that's a slight misquote but I was trying to quote the end of Ecclesiastes your worrying is useless pray and further When this truth hits the depths of your heart, I believe you'll start to understand what it means to be able to be content in any situation. I know that's a radical statement, but Paul applied it radically. Yeah, you know, prison, beatings, freezing cold, that being without food, you know. But... He very clearly recognized that this was part of his attaining a crown of glory with Christ. So rejoice and take heart, my brothers and sisters in Christ that are suffering. As one of our ecumenical councils said, I don't remember which one, but it's one of them. I think it might be Trent. So some of my brothers and sisters watching this might not be your ecumenical counsel, but whatever. I think you'll probably still find what it says here true. Any suffering that befalls you is a token of your father's love. Because Jesus says that nobody can be his disciple unless they take up their cross and follow him. We are to walk the path to glory that Christ did. Suffering unto glory. The greater your suffering, the more you have opportunity to place faith in God. And what does Jesus say is the will of the Father in John? 
that you would believe in the one that he has sent. Go forth from here, believing in Jesus Christ, in peace. Look at these plants. Notice how we've had the same plants in this gardening show for however long I've been doing it now. These plants labor or worry. No. Okay, let's look at plants I don't take care of. This grass. Are you not more valuable than this grass that has been here the entire time? Or these pots, for example, that looked completely dead, and I threw some water on them, and hey, look, they're alive. That's impossible. Are you not more valuable than this? God did not take on plant nature. God took on human nature. So, don't worry. Everything is going to be fine. I don't need to promise because God already has. <laughs>